Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. The Nikkei Index, probably the most widely watched Japanese stock market index on fire. This baby is up 12.45% just in the last two weeks. Now, I'm going to make a big gander here. Is this going to break 30,000? That's right, 30,000. You know, the last time the Nikkei was at 30,000, take a guess when that was. Just take a guess. I'm, I know you're just talking to yourself and I'm just talking to myself in my apartment, but if you would take a guess. Guys, the last time the Nikkei index was at uh, 30,000, if we go back to the chart here, we have to go all the way back to 1990s. That's right. It's been 30 years, 30 years. Is it going to go all the way back up to this level? I want to do a bit of a long term analysis today because probably most people watching these videos, it's more for your long term account, your retirement account. How much further is this going to go up and give you guys a 10 minute YouTube video update? For those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy, traveled the world, came back to Tokyo where I was born. I'm half Japanese, grew up in the States and started YouTube this year. Japanese channel is started separately in January and this English channel you're watching now just started a few months ago. Would appreciate it if you press the button below, subscribe, follow me going forward. Right now, the time check is currently November 16th. It is 7.13 p.m. Japan time, meaning it is 5.13 a.m. New York Eastern time. Let's first start with some technical positioning long term then let's go into uh, a bit of analysis short term a lot of this is going to be based on technical guys i can't really get into macros because thirty thousand is a long ways away it's a bit of a ways away and for us to get there i can't predict everything that's going to happen because there's too many macro factors involved so i think this is goes more into a technical uh basis today for today's analysis and at the very end i'll give you my recommendation again as to what i think you should do with your money with japanese stocks going forward so let's get into more of a long-term technical analysis first uh, looking at this chart here we see right now the nikkei currently is around this is a little bit outdated it's about twenty-five thousand nine hundred. so it's very close to breaking twenty-five thousand six. Twenty. it's very close to getting 26,000 right now at the moment here we're right around here at the moment now the last time we reached this level was at around 1992 so it's been around 20 oh sorry 1991 so it's been 29 years since we got to this level now 30,000 that would be a big level remember guys Japan is the only as far as I know the only developed country that still has not retaken its highs from 30 years ago in the stock market it's a big factor. If it could go back up to 30,000, this would be mean so much for the Japanese investment community. I would be very happy as a Japanese citizen and hopefully the Japanese country and uh, the younger generation will become more interested in investing in the markets going forward, not gambling, but investing uh, going forward. Now, is this going to go up? Right now, I'm looking at a monthly chart because this is just a very long time. Currently looking at a monthly chart right now. You know, clearly we're in a big breakout top, top line level here. 23,800, 23,500. This was a big resistance level for many, many years since 2018. Actually, since 2017, the end of 2017. And it, it made a false breakout here and almost made a breakout. Actually, so it's around 20... I'm sorry, guys, around 24,000 was the long term resistance level, which it touched here in December 2017. It touched once October 2018, and it also touched in December 2019. And now it is broken. It's broken, and this baby's going wild. It's going for 30,000, maybe. Let's see. Looking right now at the MACD, it's, you know, seeming like it's going up. Uh, I want to adjust this a little bit because I don't like these parameters. I think that we have to look a little bit more long term. So let's double this here and see what happens. It's a little bit smoother, but I think that's a little bit too long term. This is when you have to get into an art with the MACD. Like, what are you going to start using and whatnot? Uh, so let's go even shorter here. Let's see if we can get a right trend here. Okay, so this catches a little bit more shorter term trends because we're using a monthly chart right now. It's been pretty accurate so far. It didn't give us a false signal here. This is a quick up and quick downtrend here. And now we're back into an uptrend. What's more important is I think the MACD is still fairly low. The MACD still right here is much lower than the previous peaks in 2017 or 2015 or even 2013. So this MACD could keep going up and up and up and continue this uptrend, which it just started recently. The RSI is very similar to the 
MACD. It's in an uptrend and the monthly chart showing it's only at 62. So I think it could keep going up. Now the Bollinger Band is what worries me. It's uh, yeah, it's about breaking through this Bollinger Band. And we can see, yeah, I mean, it sometimes breaks through this Bollinger Band in the long term. Long term, you know, the next month is a little bit dangerous, whether it's going to keep going through or not. Bollinger Band, let's see if, if it can get wider and wider. That's great. But it may be long term wise a little bit overvalued here. OK, so that's long term wise looking at this thing. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's on its way to 30,000. Uh, the next big sort of resistance level. Where is this thing? I think we have to sort of go into a weekly chart and then go all the way back in time to the 1990s. Guys, remember the 90s? Great rock music back then. Looking back then here, look, it was only above 30,000 for a span of a few years in Japan. Oh, my goodness. Well, if only if I was investing back then. <laughs> so to get to 30,000, I'm seeing the first resistance line is around 26,000. That's what we're testing right now. And then the next one, by far, the big one is going to be around here. 27,000. 27,000 is a big level. We see in 1991, it was the top. The top of 1991. So if Japan wants to get that number to say a 30 year high in the Nikkei, it has to break 27,000. So 27,000 we see here was a top here in 1991. It was a bottom in 1990 during the crash. And it was also support level during 88 as well. So 27,000 I think is the big level. If it breaks through that, then the next one is 28,000. So 27,000 if we can break that then I think it's going to make headlines worldwide saying the Nikkei is at now a 30 year high. So let's see if it breaks 27,000 right now it's around 26. My bet is probably it will. It's just a matter of time but we'll see if we should rush into or not. Now let's look at some of the short term analysis. I'm going to go back to the daily chart here. So daily chart I'm going to be using some of the same analysis but it's a shorter time frame. So had to be a little bit of a different angle. Now, the first thing that stands out to me is obviously this is a big breakout pattern, very big. And we're seeing this even looking at the futures. You know, it, it's 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 a big move. Twelve point four percent in one week on the Nikkei. It's quite big. Um, looking, let's say, at La MACD right now. It's clearly in an uptrend. There's no signal at all that's going to be stopping, but it's very fast here. And that worries me. And you can see this in the RSI here. The RSI went straight up and then it sort of floundered for a little bit. And now it's going right back up here. Nothing really showing that it's overbought yet. The Bollinger Band, it's right, even inside the Bollinger Band. I mean, initially here, I sound the alarm bell saying, guys, eh, be careful. It's chasing it right here because it was through the Bollinger Band. Now it's sort of inside the band because the band has gotten wider. Right now, I'm looking at, guys, the 10 day band right now and the two standard deviation. So it's inside the band right now. To me, it seems good. One other thing I want to check is just a five year weekly RSI to see if we're overvalued. Yeah, so right now it's around 74. It could go higher. OK, so nothing really indicates to me that we should be super worried. Uh, also, I want to note the Nikkei right now. It's just highly correlated with every index. Usually it's the most highly correlated with Korea because the economies are similar. Both Japan and Korea have economies that sort of focus a bit more on exports, car manufacturing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the stock markets usually trade a bit similar, uh, but it's not just Kospi right now that's trading with. It's also trading similar with Taiwan. The correlation is up. It's up with also Hong Kong. You see the correlations were not so high before, but now it's just high with everything. Even if we look at with Europe right now, it's very, very high. If we look at with Australia right now, it's also very high. If we look at it with the Nasdaq right now. Oh, oh sorry, this is the wrong one. That's not the Nasdaq. This is the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq is around 0 0.63. It's pretty high. And then Dow is around very, very high, 0.84 at the moment. So it's trading with the U.S. market. It's actually interestingly trading more with the overall market, such as the Dow and S&P. Whereas if you look at it with the Nasdaq, it's only 0.69. So it's not quite as highly correlated. Uh, let's just look at the futures positioning as well in the Nikkei. Let's just see if there's anything we should worry about. I want to look at both COT legacy and also the CFT position right now. Now, look, see here. We don't need to look at most of this stuff here. Asset manager position wise, looking at the last. Uh, I went a little bit too far here. Yeah, let's go as far as we can. Let's go 10 years. 10 year wise, we're right around average. So nothing really long term that we should be worried about. Uh, now let's look at the COT legacy. Just looking at the non-commercial reports. 
it's still fairly low. So maybe the reason why, you know, it's going up very fast right now, I would say is the at least the macro fund traders, they're buying the futures because they were under positioned in the Japanese futures market. And that's probably the reason why that it didn't really go down so much when the US market was going down in October before the elections, the Japanese market really wasn't going down. That's probably a factor of decoupling and under positioning in the futures at the moment. OK, so listening to all of this jibber jabber, what is my recommendation on what I think you should do with your money? Money going forward are we going to break 30,000 and if so then what should you do as usual guys investment is self-responsibility please make your own decisions at the end of the day and please divide your investment up into long-term and short-term investment very very important have two separate accounts do this separately you want to catch the trend sometimes they're short term they're a few days or a few months and other times you just want to sit and hold and hold a lot of your money long term and try not to watch it too much so it's very very different strategies um right now i think looking at these charts we're gonna probably break thirty thousand. when is it gonna happen i have no idea but i'd say that the key is whether we break twenty seven thousand or not if we break twenty seven thousand on the nikkei then the chances are very high now whether it's going to do this and how it's going to do this as of right now looking at the markets Nothing really seems to stand in its way for it to go for 27,000. We're at 26,000 right now. And the US markets, guys, remember on Friday, it just broke to new highs, right? This is a big deal. It just broke out to new highs on the SP 500. This is big news. I was talking about this on Friday. Now, there's not that much resistance level, I think, to uh, get in the way. It's very, very slim, but you see the US market, the SP 500 here, did break. It broke very, very slightly. The highs here, uh, the Dow as well, you know, it's starting to break above highs. Uh, it broke very, very slightly above the February highs. So as the US market starts to break highs and goes forward and there's momentum that picks up, that's probably going to come into the Japanese market. Uh, and right now the correlation is high before it was low before when the US market was going down or up. Japan didn't care. Nikkei wasn't moving right now. It does care and it's moving. So I think that it's going to continue to pull it up. We'll see how we finish the year this year. Uh, if we can finish this year close to twenty seven thousand, then I'd say thirty thousand looks possible in the next two or three years, I'd say. Yeah. And if we break thirty thousand, then maybe we can actually go back and break all new record highs for Japan. That would change this culture. And I hope from the bottom of my heart it happens, not because I make money or somebody makes money, because then more people in Japan will become interested in investing their money, not gambling, but investing and financial literacy will go up. I think it'll change the country for good. So that's my long term recommendation. Short term recommendation, guys. Look, the chart looks great. Nothing gets in the way here. Um, but I think that you continue to go for Japanese stocks that are not as overbought right now. And there's better there's better things to buy right now. And I've been highlighting the Japanese banks. I did a video on this just a few days ago. The Japanese banks, I recommended a buy on this dip right here. And I think it has continues to go up. It's going to continue to go up. It has a long ways to go up. I understand the fundamentals, but this is the charts are the charts and it looks like a beautiful chart at the moment you can't argue with the charts and i know the fundamentals where there's you know right now the interest rates are low and it's difficult for banks to make money sometimes it doesn't matter because all that information is already in the market everybody knows it's old news but the market's going up and these topic sensitive names again not the nikkei but topic sensitive names they still have a ways to catch up so as the nikkei goes up and it's high up people are going to start pouring money in two sectors that are way behind and i think banks are still one of my favorites so that's my recommendation short term and long term i'd say continue to invest longer term diversify and hopefully we should break thirty thousand in the next two or three years ago thanks again guys for watching my video if you enjoyed the content please press the like button below and please subscribe to my channel going forward as well have a great week stay safe safe investing good luck talk to you guys later